Hello everyone, and welcome to Vitalcast number 61 with Semblance of Sanity, Jacob and Caleb. And, oh, we already got some people in the chat. Hey! I want to say hello awesome. to them. We got uh, Mitchell, Theon, Patrick, and Lass. He said, this is my first one I came to watch. I'm excited. And Lass is saying yay with a smiley face. And Sweet. Yeah, and uh, Mitchell's already saying he's He's shocked at the blurb of lore thrown at us with this last chapter, which... Lore! Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, the lore. That was a bit much. Yeah, it's it's kind of at a at a breaking point right now where people are going back and, you know, re-looking at the entire show through a new lens. Which right. Which is kind of yeah. awesome. It, it's exciting because yeah. we do not know where we're going from here, pretty much. It, which, you know, with the past volumes, I think volume four and five, it was pretty predictable, which for some theory people, mm -hmm. they loved that because our chances of being correct are higher. But on the downside, sure. your chances of being surprised is lower. Right? Yeah, right. I, I think that with regards to theories and stuff, uh, it's easy to get too attached to a specific theory. Sure. And then you end up uh, basically identifying that that theory is already made canon because, like, mm -hmm. well, there's no other thing it could be. Right. And then Rooster Teeth's just like, sorry, we're just going to drop the mic with 26 <laughs> minutes of backstory. Yeah. Ooh, contextual <laughs> storytelling. Oh, it's so... Mm. That was just so good. I mean, I mean, yeah. like, we knew that something like this was coming after the previous episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, wow. Yeah. I, I do want to say my Salem theory was partially correct. I got the she did she threw herself into a black pool. Uh, right, oh, yeah, nice. But I got all motivations wrong. You know, like mine was like, oh, right. she did it to gain more power. No, she was trying to kill herself. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> way, way darker. Uh, <laughs> this is funny that we think about Salem was introduced at the end of volume three, mm -hmm. but her first line was the first line in the entire show yep it's like like mm -hmm. that's the the and we knew that yeah. this was we knew that yeah. this was a conversation between salem and ozpin once we had finished volume three but right. now we get to go back and realize that this is a much more personal mm -hmm. emotionally driven conflict there's yeah. not a really there's not really a quest for power or nope. anything that's usual of a typical you know uh i'm a chess master right. or antagonist kind yeah. of yeah because like character. she was totally set up where we would think that she was just sort of the dark malevolent force you know that must mm -hmm. be conquered but no nope, apparently not she she's a lot more sympathetic after this episode i think yeah. a lot more i mean she's still crazy but you know i mean yes yeah. we, we like... at least understand why the crazy Exactly, so. cosmic muckery. Right, yeah. but like this puts her like way above the sympathy level of the other antagonist that we have not that much sympathy for, like hmm. Adam or Cinder. Cinder. Like Salem goes like way high up there, and now everyone's hatred is getting thrown at the gods because right they really they really screwed over humanity yeah. in a lot of ways. I, I yeah. remember editing my reaction, and at the part where they curse her, I'm like, that's just mean like mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> it's yeah <sighs> yeah did you like the connection of when uh she's cursed mm -hmm. you look at the way that happens to her because of her choices yeah but she doesn't have any choice in getting so it's a uh -huh. consequence right right but yeah. then with ozpin they're like well do we need want? someone to go back. I'll do it. And he does uh -huh. it like Pira. He jumps ahead and he's just like, I, right. I will do this immediately. Yeah. And in the same way, I think, I think it's kind of um, manipulative for the gods to just arrest Ozpin into this other dimension right. mm -hmm. all alone and yep. basically be like, well, if, if you want to see mm -hmm. Salem again, yeah, it's not like we're going to curse you with immortality or anything. But we'll give you yeah. what you want. You just have to be our our tool. Yeah. And I I'll bet two reincarnations in, he was already like, I was an idiot. Yeah, like probably. Like I should probably. not have done that. Yeah. Like I mean, yeah. yes, he, he, he was he, he's human, he made a mistake, and he really wanted to be with her to the point that he's like, I would rather be happy with her uh -huh. and 
have dominion over humans as a right. fake god <laughs> yeah. than actually like take yeah. responsibility for some of this. So it's like, oh yeah, Ozpin did make some mistakes and yeah. just oh, just a bit. I love the montage of him going through his lives though. Oh yeah, with, oh, with yeah. like how how on a bunch of them he just he's just like nope, I'm just gonna try and forget all this craziness and just do anything Oof. else. Yeah, like yeah. I I like how. They did say that, like, him inhabiting another person's body was like, oh, this is so you'll never be alone. And mm. to, to me, because in Volume 5, I believe he described it as, like, a curse or a punishment for failing right. to stop Salem, where that part might have been more of, like, a mercy, maybe? Oh, like the, the salve on the wound, so to speak, yeah. where where he's he's... This is actually something I feel like they're implying with that. Now, l let me know what you think about this. And Jacob, I don't know what you think. Do you think they're basically saying that he has all of them with him constantly? Because I don't think that's what's being implied. Yeah, I But I know. do think what they're implying is that at the very least, there is no hostile takeover. There is no, there is no total control. What it is is more or less, if you were one of the previous, previous lives you're lost into the ether because you right. died. Your body yeah. died. Yeah, That's actually a good question. But it's, it's, it's an interesting, like, wait a minute. How many are mm -hmm. technically available to Ozpin to talk with or interact with? Zero yeah. or just the body that he's currently right. inhabiting yeah. and their soul? I, I, I don't know. I assume it's just the current host. So Otherwise, then there would always be two. <laughs> yeah, the Sith, always two. Always two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No more, no, no less. <laughs> a master and an apprentice. <laughs> oh, that's that's crazy. Hey, You'll Dan. Never learn this from Good to see you here. Yeah. 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 Hey, Dan, and yeah, I, the chat's just going away with like the talking about the punishment didn't fit the crime. Ra Raul will be like it. X's. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Like, that episode was just so insane and so ridiculous, I almost feel like, what is there that can possibly be said about it? Because it... It's too big. Like, like just the kinds of things that it changes about the story as a whole, mm. it almost feels like, like the idea that at some point we were on episode one oh, of right. volume one, and it was just, let's go to Beacon Academy. Let's... <laughs> It and seems like a whole just, other world. It, like, like, there's two gods. The gods are real. They're the ones that destroyed the moon. There's this other mm -hmm. lady who they it's, cursed, who we thought we have it, to... Dis hmm? Specifically, the dark... The, 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 the dark god, the, the god of darkness. He, yeah. it, it seemed almost like he was kind of flexing on it you know that meme <laughs> weird flex but okay he's yeah. just like sorry guys yeet and he leaves and he just i'm gonna destroy your moon and it's like bro bro you could have gone anywhere else but no that was intentional he's he seems like yeah. the one that has the emotional imbalance and the brother yep. is like i am perfect i do not need it right exactly because mm -hmm. i have a uh, logical understanding of what sympathy is. So and I, I have sympathize antlers with you. and things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's another cool yeah. connotation. Was the the idea that they didn't really describe how the faunas came to be, but the gods are uh -huh. bipedal with animal transformations right. and or yeah. animal features. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I found that to be kind of a cool, yeah, cool that, little little thing there. That was a cool little thing, and also we kind of got more of an idea of how they were first treated, where they were literally thrown in cages, where. Mm -hmm. Normally right. we were just told this. Now we've seen it, I guess. Right. right. It's like there was an original war and the faunus lost. Mm -hmm. And humanity just kind of did that. And ever since then, it's right. kind of like, well, it's that, that awkward thing in history where humanity is just like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, it, uh. It's like, oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Think, right. think, things are better now. Look that. Yeah, things are better now. Let's not talk about that. Yeah, right, right. Uh. Also, like, I've, I've seen a lot of people start talking about, like, dust started showing up around then. Uh, and yeah, I wonder if the dust actually came from the moon? Because he smashed through the moon, and then the meteorites started raining down around Salem and onto sure. the Earth. Oh, sure. And yeah, like, yeah, Ozma didn't recognize yeah. the dust. That's the only thing I think we know. Was he kind of looked yeah, at it and was like, oh, what's that? Weird. And then yeah. moved on. Yeah. But, 
I, I kind of wonder if the moon was intentional, like not just to be like, oh, weird flex, but okay. But <laughs> they, they said humans would then become like imperfect and like not whole, it, thus like losing their power of magic. I right. wonder if they're like, oh, the moon will give them something that will kind of right. make up for that. You know? Yeah, that that seems more like the God of Lights way, not, not the God of Darks <laughs> way. It was just like, yeah, I I like that he had to have the last word in. Also, the God of Light leaves before the God of Darkness. Like, there's they don't leave at the same time, and I really liked that the episode made a point of showing how different they are, yeah. and that they are different characters because it would be so easy to make them a yin yang, mm -hmm. just opposite of each other. Mm. So, right. like, yeah, I mean. Maybe the amount of abrasion that the old god had with the moon meant that a lot of his skin cells or whatever, like, you know, you know off hard sure. friction with the moon and they landed with the moon stuff to, you know, leave some kind of crystals that formed and they're touched with the essence of the gods. And yeah, that sounds sure. like a good classic fantasy. And I mean, if it's the god of darkness, then it would make sense that it like, because dust seems to basically just have destructive powers. Well, also, like, magic came from the god of darkness, specifically. Oh. Oh. So Remember, he was like, you use, there. he's like, you use my gift against me. Yeah. There was the idea that Which, that oh, gift, sure. that gift, yeah. or maybe, maybe not just that gift, but, like, that form of magic was mm -hmm. his, his right. thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think back on the episode when Crow explains everything about the two gods, I think he did sort of hint towards the god of darkness being the one with more of the magical power stuff whereas the mm -hmm. god of light was more like nature and natural stuff gotcha sure and i have to go back and check that was probably one of the episodes i rewatched a lot when it first came out and then i never watched it again <laughs> yeah because it was basically like here's a world remnant in the actual Season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably one of the most awkward episodes to watch in terms of just flow within a volume five. But right. Yeah. Although I, I, one of the things that I always really liked from that is how they said that the the two gods that were opposites came together to make humanity. Right. And and like so because the fact that they made the gods so different, right, both in personality and what they do and everything, makes it so that when they have moments like even with you know cursing Salem where the two halves of them come down and it's like they're they're talking in unison and everything it's like yeah okay yeah all right it sucks salem but yeah they um they can do that but yeah um also like when when they were talking about like oh you used my magic against me i thought mm -hmm. he was just gonna like take away humanity's magic right <laughs> right know? no they're all dead <laughs> yeah 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 he, see uh, thanos yeah. does just... this he does this and just, you know, does it right. both. You know, he's just like, yeah, he's hey, just... done. We're done here. Yeah. Moving oh, on. Man. I love that they talked about it as, as yeah. an experiment as oh, well. Yeah. Basically oh. that the world is basically their broken, you know, lab station. And they just kind of threw a little bit of a, not a tantrum, but they yeah. kind of chucked a, a grenade into their <laughs> lab thing. And they were just like, yeah, we'll go get another one. And then, like, yeah. we zoom out and realize... That it's a whole bunch of warehouses, like, <laughs> yeah, like, I, I wonder if it's like their experiment on can our group projects work, like, can we right. actually get along? <laughs> and sure. the answer is, yeah, sorta, sorta, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They they had some good rules. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were able to coexist. Yeah. Maybe right. maybe in another way, you could look at like how this whole Ruby show thing ultimately kind of comes down to families and broken relationships or relationships that need to be healed it's you know it's power of friendship but then they have the whole romantic angle with salem and ozma Osman. it's going to be yeah. weird like figuring out whether or not i want to call him ozma or ozpin from now on yeah. osman 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 <laughs> that's assuming his gender kind of right though is it <laughs> i mean i i think he's been pretty <laughs> consistent well, what he identified. right right exactly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. man. So One Punch Dan is asking uh, Caleb and Jacob, which one of you is the god of light and which one of you is the god of darkness? Uh, Both, depending on the day. Yeah, it depends on the day. Yeah. Like, now, what about what about you, David? Like, what's... what's Which one am I? Yeah, uh, yeah. Which one are you on the, on the most part? Are you wholesome boy? Or are you, uh, are you I, like... I would uh, like to say I'm definitely more the wholesome boy. boy. I'm definitely more the wholesome boy. Yeah. Or it depends least, on what show we're watching. That's probably what it is. 
True. Sure. Like, hey, because sometimes I just want everyone to die. And I'm not talking about the real world. Like, in a show, sometimes <laughs> yeah. I'll just want all, like, I will want death in it to just be handed out like candy. There's, but other times, Game of Thrones, shows. not so yeah. much. There's, and then no. and then we watch Ruby and we're wholesome boys. That's right. Exactly. I, yeah. I can agree with that. There's there's yeah, been some a little shows bit of death. like uh, with Arrow. I'm just like ah, get rid of these few characters. Like just <laughs> get rid of them. Uh, eventually, I got to blam, 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 blam. We, we yeah. really like to roast Arrow as a show, yeah. and yeah, it, it deserves yeah, but, it. <laughs> yeah, but 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 on Ruby, mm-hmm. uh, I, I really again I like how they are separate characters. There's so many stories out there that kind of I, I wouldn't call it a cop out but they just they just don't give characterization to beings once they reach a level beyond humanity oh yeah and it yep. basically takes the relation out of the you know out of the character we can't we right. can't relate to them but also we can't really understand their motivations mm-hmm. so it then gets chalked up to uh oh, my ways are unknowable and therefore exactly. i don't have to write complicated characterization here yeah. so, right and and, like, one of the best examples I would say of doing that while not doing that is, like, Dr. Manhattan and Watchmen, sure. where it's a point of conflict, right? You know, the whole idea of, like, oh, I don't really, you know, feel any of the things that you humans feel. You know, what, what do I do with that? But, like, with the gods here, they, like, I find I found myself liking the god of darkness a lot. Right. Like, like yeah. just because of the, the way he, like, the way he talked and all that stuff, you know, the fact that he was actually willing to help her, but then he wasn't so proud as to, uh, like, when the god yeah. of light came up and was like, she tricked you, he was like, oh. He's like, oh. My apologies. And then they yeah. turn at Salem, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and, and it's, it's like this moment where she's yeah. like, yes, I've got them divided. I can already hear my theme song uh-huh. playing. Right, right, right. Right. <laughs> and yeah. then they, they both turn and look at her and it's like, oh, so you, yeah. you were the one, oh, that's cute. And she's just like, eh, tap out, <laughs> uncle, uncle. Yeah, yeah. I, I screwed up. I, and I did you catch the meta potential joke of the the oh. God of Darkness? He had to have the last word right. <laughs> and she's like, come back, you can't leave. And he's like, still demanding things of your creators. Mm-hmm. And do you hear the, do you yeah, hear the yeah, meta, yeah. The meta yeah. message from oh. Miles and Carrie <laughs> talking to the fandom, being uh-huh. like, Still demanding things mm-hmm. of your creators. Should, should we just like Photoshop their faces fading in as he says that? Like, sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, that not, actually. Sounds if someone amazing. in chat wants to do that, or Dave, <laughs> you, I, I, I we will not steal your. Oh you know, yeah, your potential we, meme value there. I, I give anyone permission to do it, as they might execute it better than I. Sure. Uh, so. Uh, I'll but. I'll pass it along to our Discord if I don't see it within the week. Dude, that <laughs> that is actually like a good choice from that whole 16 20 minute clip that you guys sent me before the panel. Yeah, I had a pick. I'm like I I trust your Discord. Like <laughs> they, <laughs> they're they pretty awesome. That. They are amazing. Like <laughs> our Discord is pretty crazy. They're 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 uh. legit. And uh, they yeah. they they know when to roast us properly and yes. and meme us, so that's yes. that's always See, good fun. Yeah, I, I was scrolling oh. through our Twitter chat again to like find the logo mm-hmm. with the transparent dis, uh, background just in case I had to use oh, it right. again. And I scroll past that video. I'm like, gosh, dang it! Like just thinking of all the <laughs> stuff I saw, and it's like I could have used this part or this part. Like it was really hard I, to choose. Yeah, yeah. You said just it. send everything. I was like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> <everything>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a guy I got a particularly shout out. He does a lot of the video related mm-hmm. kind of things like that mm-hmm. on our Discord. Uh, Marcus, I don't think he's in chat right now, but mm-hmm. hey, if any of you guys he's are awesome. on the Discord that are here, mm-hmm. you can pass it along to Marcus that we we shouted him out on yeah. over here cuz he he's actually a, an editor of ours for yep. um uh one show. Uh yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 But um cool guy help pay his way through school and stuff oh that's cool <laughs> send everything which stuff everything yeah exactly man yeah yeah basically that, that was kind of my de- demands i was like okay guys uh, i'm not exactly telling you what i'm doing with this but uh just send me your like best video moments uh preferably funny you're like okay be more specific uh maybe <laughs> maybe more ruby related but yeah oh was, yes yes brandon yes yes, yes. Yeah. we cannot uh, wait for hammer times uh, video on this it's gonna dude. be so good dude I, ch- I almost feel bad for hammer time because trying to find a way to meme this in such a yeah. way that's not like going to 
you know, just like tread on some dangerous ground because we're dealing yeah. in like the the canon lore. Stuff. Like when you yeah. basically create a narrative element in the story where this jinn can literally speak the canon backstory. There is no mm. interpretation mistakes. Nope, there is nothing. It is the word of, of God. And yeah. it's like, yeah. we have to take it as it is. And it, oh, you're going to try and meme that? Hammer yeah. time, I have all the, like, if you yeah. can do it, like, it was It wow. was yeah. great, though, having Colleen Clinton Beard narrate backstory for 26 minutes. Have you seen uh, Wolf awesome. Children? No, I haven't. Have it's you seen so Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood? Yes. In the dub? Yes. Riza Hawkeye's voice actor. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And, and she's yeah. the main character yes. in Wolf Children. And she's the main character And in it's Wolf an Children, amazing yeah. movie. Absolutely incredible. Okay. And one one of my that, favorite voice actresses. So Is yeah. that on Verve by any chance? I don't know. It's a movie, so okay. it might not Probably be. Probably not. Yeah. No. I, uh, I know no. Crunchyroll and Verve have some movies, but it is very... Mm -hmm select on what yeah and i think are. also yeah. with the whole funimation crunchyroll breakup going Debacle. on yeah yeah it's a little it's a little thing uh, never ever ever <laughs> yeah it's like oh my... also momo in the dub of mha yes, okay right. well i haven't really oh. seen too much of the yeah. mha dub but yeah. yeah but that's cool i i have watched uh season one and i'm in season two of the dub gotcha so ah cool. oh Fun no that's that's no longer on Verve now, isn't it? The the mm. dub. Yeah. But at least at least uh, we still have the bummer. sub. So Yeah. Oh, Ozma. Salem, I've come to bargain. Dies. Dies again. <laughs> Dead. Dead inside oh and out. Gosh. That's amazing. <laughs> what a what a comment. I do like the idea uh, though that Salem remember in volume four, Salem's like, so Cinder, did you kill dear Ozpin? And she's even talking about Ozpin with the dear mm -hmm. adjective, basically yep. saying like Oh yeah, I, I have a sick love for for for, <laughs> for Ozpin. Killing. It'd yeah. been funny if she's like, "Did you kill dear Ozma? I mean Ozpin." And it's like, <laughs> "Wait, what? What was that? What? What did you say? Nothing? Nothing? Yeah. What? 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 Yeah. <laughs> just accidental slip of the tongue. Fan right. theories start flying. They're like, "What? What does yep. she mean?" Um, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, so, man. uh, do we oh. want to go into that new show segment? I was slightly hinting at before we went live sure sure okay. let's go for it so let's see all right then. guys we're getting put we're getting put on the spot so, here but not that show the different I, yeah. yeah i i don't have a a name for this segment yet so if anyone wants to suggest a good right, one let's, let's brainchild this jacob <laughs> yeah so i'm gonna give you a minute and five seconds to answer these questions keep in mind is this uh one at a time or you know with the amount of questions i prepared you it's whoever wants to answer the question. Answers okay, so it. let's just both blurt out our answers All right. ASAP. All right, cool. Let's do this. Okay, I'm ready. All righty. When will Weiss build her ice castle? Not soon enough. Yeah. All right. What was that. Maria's life, uh, life like to have her not die of shock seeing a genie? She's been through some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's seen some shit. Probably, probably since Hazel took her eyes or something. I mean, that's just a theory, yeah. but, you know, mm -hmm. who knows. Okay. Ozma, Ozpin, what are some other Oz names? Oz... Osmosis. Yeah. Uh, Osmosis. Ozcream. I don't know. <laughs> Why didn't Yang put snow tires on her bike? Because the bumblebee don't need no treads. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> who will be the first to be eaten in the blizzard? Uh, uh, obviously Oscar. Like, <laughs> no. It's 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 sad, but you know, <laughs> it's no, the no, only way no. to get back it's at Oscar. It's going to be Blake. Yeah. Why? And Yang. Oh wow, Jacob. <laughs> wow. All right. Are are the gods pen pals? Uh, they they have a rocky relationship. Yeah. Okay. Are the okay? The timer went off. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I I had a few others like are the daughters actual maidens? Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that they made there be four of them, I, like four daughters, I have an emotionally. Magic, like, there's have an something emotion there. Yeah, there's something there, but I think it's an emotional reason rather than a, like yeah, a literal probably. reason. Mm. Yeah. My 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 hot take on that, I'd love to know what you guys think, is that it was kind of like a twist of fate that four women should come to him, but remember it was one initially yeah. in the legend essentially, and uh... and. They did show the little teddy bear, so I'm guessing they're dead. And they blew up yeah. the place. They blew yeah, up yeah, the place. Yeah, they blew up the yeah. place. The daughters so so the, the question I think that most people are going off of is that 
well, if they have the DNA of Ozma and Salem, yeah. will they get the reincarnation thing? Will they get the immortal thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think either one is kind of weird. So yeah. I, I would go with no on all accounts. Right, because yeah. then we might have this weird bloodline problem where like <laughs> 10 million years ago, Ozma was like seeding humanity basically. Oh, no. Maybe. <laughs> and, and and it's not it's not his like intention, but it's yeah. just that he's lived so many lives. He could yeah. have five hundred thousand descendants, mm-hmm. and by this point, like yeah. everyone's you know point two percent Ozma, you know at well, this point, yeah. like yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. I I guess that does kind of blow a hole in that theory. My my original theory was just like okay, maybe they didn't fully inherit what happens to Ozma. And instead, it's just sure. like their magic power that transfers, and it's uh, right. Yeah, he, I he have that. And he could have, and he could have lied. Like yeah. now that we know that the only way <laughs> to be certain of something is if Jin orates it, like uh-huh. then you right. know, Oz, Ozpin could have lied. Yep. And yeah. and the the reason why I think it could be an emotional thing is just that he sees four girls, four yeah, young they, women, and he's just like, sense. oh, he's like, this is what I could have had. Yeah. And he doesn't want to bear this burden, so he gives it in kind of a selfish way to them. And I think yeah. he lessened a lot of his overall, you know, power at that, you know, at that time. Yeah, because he did and, at diminishing his own magic. Yeah, mm-hmm. and maybe that's just his thing. And now he just wants to, uh, you know, live live a life essentially with new, uh, uh, a new family of daughters that he could have sure. i don't know it well, seems yeah. a little creepy the more and more i talk about it and then it's, <laughs> no, it puts well, ozpin in a really bad light if that you know it I... always makes things weird whenever you're dealing with immortality because yeah just, that's true yeah yeah well yeah. i i could probably help out that theory a bit and this is just a thought that came up okay. now but you, you said he did it intentionally and like you know maybe he wanted to live with a new family and you know maybe maybe that's kind of the point and something i was thinking back with Salem and like why mm-hmm. she might want to collect the maiden, the four maiden powers is because they do remind her of their children, and sure. she's just kind of like sure. you know protective mother kind of instincts mm-hmm. you know like bring me back my children oh, let me keep in control that would be really cool and I like that it. was a connection there yeah yeah and, and maybe Ozpin you know in in like uh, I miss my daughters and I want to remember them and granted these four girls uh, powers maybe it could also be like what helps make uh salem remember their daughters and learn to appreciate life because it's limited and all that and maybe yeah, i guess breaks the curse somehow mm-hmm. sure true love's kiss <laughs> <laughs> but i like also that we we understand potentially why salem is so uh, uh, gracious towards cinder yeah. Maybe it's the thing of being oh, like yeah. also, oh, I never got the opportunity to, you know, watch Raise. a daughter grow up. Sure. And maybe you teach her magic and how to burn <laughs> enemies before her. Oh. I mean I mean I mean, she oh. dumped herself into the black goo. Like yeah. she's been emotionally compromised over the years oh, yeah. of trauma <laughs> and just being alone and all that jazz. So I, I, I say give her a kind of a break there. But Cinder is not like a victim here. Like Cinder is all kinds of screwed up as well. Yeah. Although although we're we're getting some really awesome direction with Cinder so far. I'm very optimistic about what happens this volume. Me too. Yeah. I I'm really I was really surprised to see her like first shot of chapter two. I'm like, wow, this is a yep. lot earlier on answers for Cinder than I expected. We yeah. have a we have an unhealthy uh, attachment to Cinder because the minute she came back, we were like yes yes, and then we were like Cinder alone, Cinder yep. alone because it's a it's a it's mm, I don't want to like come out and say it, but I do feel like the Kruby takes a lot of inspiration from Avatar: The Last Airbender. Oh yeah, and oh, yeah. it's becoming more and more apparent just over time. We literally have Katara, uh-huh, you know, yeah, joining the crew go. here. Yeah. 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 We had Korra, I mean, Blake coming back to the Southern mm-hmm. Water Tribe. I mean, Menagerie <laughs> yeah. with the boy and the two parents that are the chiefs and chieftains and stuff. And they're dealing with the civil war problems of the whole thing. That was volume four. Mm-hmm. Um, we have, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. what yeah. else? What else? Just so much stuff. We have the Avatar, the lives reincarnating and stuff yeah. with that there. And then, we of have course, the, Cinder, we have the Cinder with you know, the scar who's dishonored. Fire Nation, Fire Nation. 
Yeah. Yep, yep. And now must and... capture the silver-eyed warrior to regain her honor. Yep. 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 Yeah. 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 Dante Bosco and Ruby Wen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I was, was yeah, going to point that out once you were talking about. It. Oh my gosh. Oh. Uh. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I think Lass was talking about what you guys were saying about Ozpin not too long ago and seeding the Earth. She said this whole thing is going to go Greek myth on us. Everything happens because the gods can't keep it in their pants. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's that's a very good point. I mean, I mean, at least they're not like avataring into any beings, as far sure. as we know. Yeah, they seem to be like this is an experiment. We are testing the reaches of our capabilities as anti spirals. I mean, as <laughs> right, right, as as gods. I mean, aliens. Well, whatever and the thing they is, are. is that at this point, Ozpin and. Salem could also be considered the gods in an, in Greek myth because they mm -hmm. did play at being gods for a while. Right. So, you know. Yeah, I do like, like the some... connotation also that the gods are not transcendent beings. They are, you know. So really, the, the, the gods, the actual gods, are like the titans in Greek mythology. Right. Oh. And then it's going to be about how they might be sort of thrown and stuff. Mm. Yeah, in yes. which case, there needs to be a third god. Wait. <laughs> That's Ruby. <laughs> Wait, what? Well, I was, because I was oh, no. if anything, Salem's Poseidon trying to do that. And, yeah. uh, and Zeus, you know. Yeah. I uh, mean Yeah, I mean that Salem. kinda that kind of does come come as a question, like, do they try to redeem humanity for the humans or do they try to challenge mm. the gods after Salem? Or, or both. Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Either way, we now know what the end of Ruby will generally be like. Mm -hmm. That's a crazy thing about yeah. this episode. This episode gave us an ending. Like, the we now man. know kind of how the whole story will end, but right. we don't know what the aftermath details mm -hmm. will be. We just know a general broad stroke kind of image of yeah. Yeah. the gods will show up again, the relics will be reassembled, we and don't stuff know will go down. Galaxies you know? or not. <laughs> so, so have you seen Gurren yeah. Lagann? Uh, I, I know the basic gist of it. I okay, gotcha. still so that's you. Monty's, or that was Monty's favorite anime, yeah. and it, it was it was one of his inspirations for Ruby. Yeah, I remember. And Jacob and I were basically screaming in episode three, being like, "It can go, Gurren Lagann now! It can do <laughs> yeah. it! They introduce gods, and the gods aren't even gods; they're from space, so they're aliens. They're the anti spirals. It all makes sense." The and classic I, studio I, trigger move. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But but it, it kind of makes me happy because yeah. this is the kind of thing where the fight doesn't have to be about stopping an evil More. villain because we can't kill Salem. I right. loved how they were like, no, you can't beat Salem. Like right. yeah. that, that could have felt so contrived if that, if we didn't have this episode. Mm -hmm. And now that we know that's kind of the case, it's going to be, you know, something like love. It's going to be something in a way that's kind of cheesy, mm -hmm. but it's going to be something you know, something powerful that's innate about the human spirit. It's going to be Ruby's silver eyes in combination with her mm. smaller, more honest soul that's going to save the day. It's not going to be yeah. some grand display of huge power. That's yeah. going to be saved for when the gods come back and right. are like, so you didn't learn your lesson. Mm -hmm. Get ready to get double snapped. And Ruby's like, uh, uh yeah, no, no. <laughs> uh, like, look at us. Look We're at Weiss's power of dabbing. Like, can you honestly dabbing. destroy that? Yeah. yeah, I yeah. I also wonder, like, because now, potentially, if the rest of humanity learned of Salem, if that could help unite them against her or against the gods, or if learning about how potentially defeating her doesn't mean straight up killing her because she can't die, but rather trying to help her ch have a change of heart to break the curse... I sure, would right. divide humanity more because people would be like, no, she deserves to die because of this. And then other people are like, right. no, we should be helping her break the curse by changing her heart mm -hmm. and then serve justice after that, maybe. You know, right. How much redemption do you think is going to happen? In For just in general? Yeah. Because there's a few characters that they have it set up now where it could potentially have a redemption plot line, right? I think yeah. everyone could potentially be redeemed, but I don't know who. Build. Right, because yeah, because obviously not everybody, but yeah. like, I also want to say yeah. thank you to Mitchell not for subscribing. Yeah, Tyrion, I don't think is gonna get redeemed. <laughs> <laughs> like, and that's Tyrion's okay. Gonna, that's okay. Yeah. He's fun in his crazy way. And yep. We don't need him to change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Cinder, I'm 
sitting here, I'm like, ah, I, I, I could be fine either way at this point. Yeah. But, like, this season, I'm kind of hoping that either it goes the Zuko route or it goes the we're going to learn to be scared of Cinder again route. Mm. Like, right. She sure. kind of regrows as a villain. unhinged. Yeah. <laughs> Cinder unhinged. Yeah. Um, <laughs> John Ronald. Not Cinder, she not... murdered Pyrrha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, people are saying... Oh, episode four, though. Yeah. Like, let's let's talk episode four, too. Like, okay. we're coming off of a lore dump, mm-hmm. and it ends with Oscar, Ozpin, Nozma, just kind just... of, like, defeated uh... and dejected. Do you think they're going to do the thing of, like, screaming in his face? Or do you think it's going to be more the thing of, like, guys, this is a kid still. Like, let's not yeah. blame him yet. And Ozpin's going to just kind of recede into Oscar... And maybe just yeah. shut down for a while. So sure. there'll just be this awkward thing of them walking through the snow. <laughs> and Oscar's like, I, uh, I I at least told you guys, they're like, not now, Oscar. We're just processing right now. And he's just like, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I. And then it's going to be like, you know, Maria, who's going to come up to me like, no, young man, you, you did a, you did well. You, you, did you good. are a good cinnamon roll. With <laughs> yes, yes, yes. When, when I get an oven, I'm going to bake you cookies. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, uh, you know, I I could see some some characters being totally reactionary. Uh, Weiss, Blake, and Yang more so, but I think mm-hmm. Crow and Ruby and Maria mm-hmm. are gonna be more of the uh, awkward silence. Let's process this first <laughs> kind of people. Sure. So, Here's a good question. Yeah. The very fact that all this like was brought to the surface and everything is that all because of Crow's semblance. Just oh. Austin started having the worst luck. Everyone started questioning him. <laughs> and then they ended up... Then they ended That's up... the joke, though, Jacob. That's the yeah. meme, is that... <laughs> this whole story hey, exists because you're bored someone being you. near me. So, uh, someone in my chapter one reaction actually commented saying, Crow was really irresponsible being on that train with them. It's because <laughs> of his semblance that they derailed and all that. I'm like... I'm like that's a little far, but that's I can like, see. That's like telling Crow to just take his gun and, like, Shoot. you know, just yeah. no, just, no. He no. just needs to go fly as a crow around near Salem. That's it. That's the best <laughs> thing hey, Salem, can do. Hey, Salem, don't make me take a dump on you. <laughs> just not tell her about your semblance and just say, I want to serve you, madam. <laughs> But, like, he's one of the most yeah. legendary servants of Ozpin, Jacob. Right, exactly. Yeah. He says, Ozpin's stupid. He, he never it, trusts me with anything. I want to be a loyal it, bodyguard now. Yeah, I think that'd be great. She'd be like, your side. awesome. Yeah. Tyrion, Hazel, have your way with him. And they'd be like, oh, wonderful. Uh, yeah, it, especially after, There's like... no way that would work. Especially after, like, Raven's whole thing revealing to Cinder that she's the Spring Maiden and also kind of, like... Right go on her third path like i'm not choosing either one of sides i choose me and just kind of going off i don't think they trust crow too well because like if anything no, you probably go no. back to your sister and tribe rather than to say them <laughs> right yeah. right yeah and maybe he's so you know renowned as far as one of you know ozpin's eyes mm-hmm. um he's the kind of person yeah. that they would already know his semblance of you know, his semblance as I well. Mean, he probably did, doesn't tell people very often. Or it's just generally this thing of when Crow's around, just things go badly. Just, yeah. We just kind of ignore him and just chase him away. Him and his little... You know, yeah. you, know uh, you know how he was mentioned to used to be a teacher at an academy? Like, right. did, did all oh. of his students just, like, flunk out? And, like, that's why he stopped teaching? Like his hey, bad he taught just... Ruby how to use a scythe, so this is true. It's not like his semblance is always just you know Messing making him roll up. nat ones on everything. It was just know? bad luck for all the grim that she was practicing. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's chaotic. Grim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, there's something that's pretty interesting to bring up. We now have so many things that attract the grim in this story, and we uh... have no idea of proximity, magnitude all these sure. things so should we actually as a community not attribute anything to be a grim attractor because like here's my thought if the relic attracts the grim right mm-hmm. does it attract them as long as they're within 200 miles or only they're within a mile or is it just like oh i feel something warm that direction but it's like one of those 
like waypoint things in a video game it's like yes the objective is that way but it's ten thousand miles that way right. so Ooh. it's not an it's not a strong attraction so my question yeah. is like you have all these people that are distraught you have mm -hmm. that part where they're like the turrets they're going to attract the grim but then there's crows just bad luck and then there's also right. uh the relic so should we just kind of ignore that in general like because i actually... see a lot of people critiquing like oh but that attracts the Grim, but that doesn't, but that does. It's like, they, they don't know that mechanics. That a weapon to I don't... confuse the Grim and lead them on goose chases. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I I, think that's, like, part of the reason why they put them in the middle of the kingdoms is mm -hmm. if the Grim do sense them from farther away, then, you know, they have, like, a whole kingdom and community to go through, which is guarded by hunters and walls and right. mm -hmm. all of that. Or maybe they're put in a vault to, like, suppress the the grim yeah you know? right. yeah like the the relic of knowledge was literally in some kind of extra dimensional portal oh yeah that's a good point. thing yeah. so yeah. it's like well okay i guess i guess that's why ozpin wasn't worried about salem finding the relic at vet at um at beacon right because he's like <laughs> Yeah. No, 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 no. No one's going to find that. Like, no one's going to find that. I don't that even know where it is yeah. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What is Dan saying? Yeah, uh, he's saying he wanted to know if the Grim Attracting Element came into play, if the God of Light painted the relics as vital for humanity. Oh. Hmm. So. Okay, let's see if he's... Let's see if there was something they just forgot, or if there's some 4D chess going on right here. Because, here's an idea... Okay. If the relics are something that are, you know, essential for humanity and the Grim are attracted to basically just light in general. We did see the Grim creeping yeah. up on the God of Light when he entered the Domain of Darkness mm -hmm. or whatever. Well, was that yeah. under the command of the Brother, though? Yes, right. we yeah, don't we know. know. We yeah. don't know. So the Grim are without a master. They are, you know, whatever. And there's some, you know, really powerful girl just kind of generally calling the shots. But yeah. maybe once they're out here and stuff, they're just like, oh, we're just attracted to the, the attributes of our original creator. Oh, that's what it is. They're all little doggies trying to find their master. And they're like, <laughs> I sense negative emotion over here. Master, <laughs> maybe are you him. here? No, it's just these stupid humans. Just eat them. Just yeah. Yeah. eat them. I mean, they, they were kind of <laughs> created to, like, destroy the God of Light's creations. So right, maybe if right. he was the one that made the relics, they count as a creation right. of the God of Light, and that's kind of what right. sure. created. That's destroyed. probably what it is. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to find a stupid reason. That's just oh no, I love my yeah. crack theories so much. Like, oh yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, I just, prob it's probably to destroy them, like you said. Yeah, and like I wonder if like Salem wants to destroy the relics, or maybe just use them as one super cool. weapon oh. against the gods. You know, I, I think she's still potentially doing this out of spite or what you're saying there with yeah. using it as some kind of weapon. Because what if she's just trying to, you know, die? And yeah. the best way to do this is to force another judgment upon humanity. Either right. way, if the gods come back, she's either going to die. Yeah. She's either not going to die. Humanity is going to die, though, if they come back at any point, you know, in the right. near Before future. The so, yeah. Yeah, Which so Ozpin is hiding them all across the world in the most defended places from someone like Salem, being like, no, you can't do it. You can't do it. I found all the relics at some point, and I put them over there, and over there, and over there, and over there. Like, <laughs> Yeah, and, and she said, like, if she can't kill the gods, she definitely wants to, like, upset them, you know? and Yeah, spite like, them, yeah. Spite them. So, you know, her having them destroy humanity just makes them more upset and disappointed in their own creation, it right kind of achieves her goal to some degree right right yeah. yeah and and in some ways as an experiment it's a yeah it's a waste of time and energy because they're looking at this from a very impersonal perspective so they're just like yeah. you made us travel all the way back here and it was you again yeah and she's just yeah. like hi don't care <laughs> kill these fools like mm -hmm. kill them all please right right yeah. oh and kill me if you want oh oh no you won't do that okay and she's doing like <laughs> egg them on and be like come on kill me kill me i did it all again oh watch when they rise up from the ooze again i'll do the whole thing over again oh man salem i i, I love that aspect potentially queen. of her character and that yeah. she's she's just it, spite now i i guess in that way she's doing the doctor strange thing 
Right. And she's like, hey guys, I've come to destroy humanity again. Or summon you to destroy humanity again. Mm-hmm. I guess I guess that's kind of the opposite of what Doctor Strange did, but still includes Wait a minute, the wait, are you talking really about... Again. Wait, 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 hold on. You're saying Doctor Strange, you said Doctor Manhattan, which... I well, no, Doctor, Doctor Strange, Strange. with a Dormammu have come to bargain. Yeah, oh, yeah. gotcha. But that, okay. but like, hey, Dormammu, uh, I'm here to piss you off Although, and kill humanity. Yeah. Actually, here's a, here's a weird idea. What? The gods don't like that Salem has tried, and in some cases has succeeded for a little while, to manipulate them. Mm-hmm. So if she brings the gods back, because originally, originally, it was supposed to be Ozpin's whole thing, or Ozma, to bring the gods back, and then they would judge them. But if Salem brings them back, and it's like, kill them for me, they might be like, well, no, screw you. We, we don't answer to you. <laughs> you know? And that's actually backfires. what saves humanity. Her plan just backfires. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's another thing, is that the mission from the gods to Ozpin is impossible. Right. Mm. They, he can't bring everyone in humanity into harmony and learning to basically live together right. in peace. Yeah. Like, it's basically saying, you have to kill Salem. But Salem is unkillable. Unless the world yeah. itself is destroyed. Unless, basically, the, the Silver Eyes is the, I'm going to lock the god of... of Salem, basically. I'm going to lock uh, Salem away for thou- uh, you know, an unlimited time because right. her power locks Grimm into a frozen, like, Steady. I don't know, time stasis thing or yeah. whatever. Okay. What, they, what they really mm-hmm. just need to do. Thanos dust doesn't work in space, but if they could use enough of it to get projectile to reach escape <gasps> velocity before the dust dies out, they could lock Salem in there, point it at the sun, and then just get her to get launched into the sun... And then there we go. Why didn't I remember that? That was one of the biggest hints about dust all along, was it doesn't work in space. The gods are aliens. They came from outer space. Right. The dust is... We can't use it against them. Yeah, it's... Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can't throw galaxies at each other. Exactly. Well, no, 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 no. Not dust. But but I I just find that to be a, a, a little subtle hint that the origins of dust... Are something else, and it came from outer space, mm, like the moon. Well, well, it's yeah, yeah, the moon or the moon or or, yeah. or whatever. But I just find it interesting that the gods basically left this thing there that keeps them on the planet. Hmm. They can't become an extraplanetary species. They can't accidentally discover yeah. the gods. And that's how this oh. isn't a trigger show, right? <laughs> <laughs> they 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 can't they can't have their waifu turn into a giant spaceship to go sacrifice itself fighting the aliens. Right, right. Yeah. Since so. when aliens have horns? No, nah, they can be they can they can look however they want. They're just yeah. doing that because it makes them look like regal beings of nature that humanity would sure. worship and yeah. you know. So uh Mitchell in the chat says he has a question, but I haven't seen his question in the chat after that, but I did see someone Hold on, I'll scroll up. Oh, Uh, oh, Dominic was asking if we think we'll see Adam's past, and I think earlier they're asking if they think that's next episode. I don't. Uh, Adam? Yeah, I don't think we're gonna. No, I think they're gonna they're gonna lightly segue into Adam before going heavy on Adam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Adam has only been teased in the first episode, if that was Adam. But. But, okay, the whole thing from the character short and the idea that, okay, that Adam, like, tossed his mask aside. And then he's still wearing it. He's still, yeah, he still yeah, went yeah, back to grab. It. Like, ah. Uh. Yeah, I... Yeah. That continuity. I mean, maybe, maybe, uh, well, we did He see actually has White a House bunch of them that he carries around. Yeah. yeah, when he went back to the throne room, he opens up his closet and he has his mirror of he's himself like with, with like his black glasses. outlines, you know. Yeah, he's like Ida with his glasses, you know. He's like, yeah. "Oh, welcome to my room." They're like, "You have so many masks." Yeah, what's wrong with that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Do you guys think that was like a, like just Blake having like a PTSD memory, or like that was actually Adam hinting at his presence on the train? I don't know. They so, could do either one. So it, yeah. it it comes down to really what they want to do here because. If they want to simplify the story, moving everything onto one general linear plot line is easier to write. Yeah. And Adam was shown alone 
at the whole White Fang stronghold thing, and everyone's dead mm-hmm. yeah. by his hand, it seems like. So he's essentially abandoned the whole White Fang, everything there. They've all already been... There's the whole thing with Gira and Kali, you know, right. reshaping the White Fang and all that with, uh, you know, Ilya and stuff. But they had those two Tweedledee and Tweedledee, Tweedledum characters basically be in the story. And I think the actual reason for them to be in the story was not to just be huntsmen on there and build the world, but to also have them drop that line of like, oh, I didn't leave the back door open. Yeah, that wasn't me. Oh. As yeah. Like why why, would, they, why would they choose on. to put that in as the casual right. throwaway dialogue? It's the kind uh, of thing where it's like, oh, mm-hmm. they're trying to tell us Adam is there, and it's yeah. the way he snuck on the train. Ooh. Yeah, but the fact that it could just be a callback to, like, the black trailer, you know, and that he's dressed different and Adam does love his trench coat. You know? Well, the, the, the decoupling of the right. cable cars mm-hmm. is definitely a callback to yeah. the, the, blink, yeah. the black Wh- trailer. Which is why mm-hmm. I said it was more like a PTSD flashback, because right. it's her repeating a right. event that probably would yeah. be triggered. So Yeah, it, it definitely works on both angles. It's just a question of what do they want to do. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting if he's, like, on the train, but he's on the side with the engine, so he'd be with the rest of uh, Team Juniper. Sure. Know? And it's like, oh, my plan isn't going exactly the way I wanted, but maybe I could torture Blake a little bit more by killing her loved ones on the train. Ooh, Adam versus Team Juniper. That sounds like a fight that just is a, a good one to have, yeah. because yeah. it's a they three don't on one anymore. It's a three-on-one, and while I would definitely give a slight edge to Team Juniper, just the fact that Jean is on the team is a liability because it's just going to be a moment of, like, yeah, cool aura, shield and all. I'm just going to grab your face, smash it into the ground, and be like, you guys don't want him to die? You know, put down your weapons, and then it fights over. He, He slashes it. He tries to slash Jean's throat. And Jean's like, yeah, I have a lot of aura. You'll have to do that at least, like, five or six more times. <laughs> <laughs> just, so just starts Deadpooling. <laughs> just like, uh. <laughs> yeah. Or, 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 like, you know, a lot of people were really confused about, uh, Adam's semblance is that he can cut through aura. It's like, uh, no. Because he, you know, hit Yang and right, one right. hit went through aura and everything. It's like, no, his attack had 10,000 damage and her aura had less than that. So it broke through yeah. but but the idea would be that he tries to do his moon slice, slice. whatever thing on uh john and he just kind of takes it and and he's like the hell <laughs> that would be one of the funniest things ever and john's just like here's pierce voice you have a lot of it yeah like, yeah that would be the cheesiest thing ever but i think it'd be so well, great you you beat my super what? edgy ultimate move there's Ow. what movie am i thinking of when like oh. the villain's like this usually works and like the oh, that's um, uh, that's... it's Kung Fu Panda. Yeah, Kung, it's Kung, Kung Fu Panda. Panda. Yeah, yes. There's another one in the first Avengers. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. When Loki yeah. hits him, hits uh, Iron Man with a thing, uh-huh. and he's like, yes. uh, "This usually works." He's like, "Oh, yeah. points issues, you know." <laughs> uh, I found the question that Mitchell was wanting to ask. Okay. It was about yeah. the final question of uh, the era being asked for the relic, and who do you think it will be that uses it, and what uh, do you think the question will be? Will Bumblebee ever happen? <laughs> uh, that's a future question, so it doesn't count. Um, oh. Yeah, I was going to say... I, uh, I, did I you think s- they're going to hold on to the question for a long time. Yeah, especially because they have a lot of information to process, so they probably mm-hmm. want to like choose wisely their last question. And mm-hmm. uh, have you yeah. seen the fan art meme of them like asking a question like... Uh, I think it was like, how do we defeat Salem? And she's like, uh, that's a spoiler question. Next. You know, yeah, just kind of yeah, I've seen that. That's, um, that's genius. Yeah, like, that's that's uh, really funny. For anyone that's throw... been to cons and watched the Q&As and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's... I, I just love how at the Ruby panel they're like, hey, please no spoiler questions. First question, spoiler question. Yep. Guys, what did we say? <laughs> they, and, and they try to preface it with like, I know this is a spoiler question, but can you like can you make an oh, exception it's for me? So yeah. so painful. We went to RTX and we you know yeah. hung out with you a lot and stuff. Yeah. And which by the way, were... thank you so much for the pizza. Like, oh, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah that was a great that pizza time. Was so good. But like like on the panel that 
uh, I got to ask my question at, hmm. I kind of tried to walk the line of asking, what are the themes? You know? Yeah, I was like, yeah. in the last RTX, you guys gave us an answer as to what the themes of Volume 5 would be. Yeah. Can you give us a similar answer to what the themes in Volume 6 will be? And they were like, oh, that's a spoiler question. And I was like, oh. oh but no. then I went back to Arnold. Uh, I was sitting next to Arnold with uh, Murder Birds, and he was like, it's okay, Caleb. I already asked that question last night to Miles and Carrie, and they uh, gave me an answer. All right, awesome. Yeah, I so, was going to so say. So it's, it's uh, about who you ask the question to. <laughs> when is Neo coming back? <laughs> 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 Dan asking uh, real questions here. <laughs> oh. Right? Our fandom is so weird. Like, this yeah. fandom is so weird. Oh, we, like, Neo is everyone's best character. <laughs> like, like uh, it's we have Chibi to thank for it. Yeah. Oh, Chibi! Right, Chibi, Chibi is so you. good. It yeah. is. Uh, speaking of Neo, do you think that was, like, a hint to her with Roman's hat in the intro? I, well, I someone, someone fought Cinder with an umbrella in the opening. Yeah, yeah. so... I almost don't want to get my hopes up. Yeah, I, you I'm, know? I'm with you. Yeah, um, it, yeah. It's like a, if it yeah. happens, it happens. It, I also think, here's a here's a way that I think actually Neo <laughs> is, um, do you notice how dark it was in that little fight with Cinder and whoever oh, yeah. that was? It, it was mm -hmm. a very low lighting situation. That seems artificially edited to be darker. Mm. So my oh. thought is that if they have that kind of fight, the reason yeah. why I think that fight could happen is that Cinder doesn't believe Little Miss Malachat and comes back to the Spider's Tavern or mm -hmm. whatever uh -huh. at night and tries to steal the information that they might have. Uh -huh. Sure. And Neo basically defends tries. the place and stuff. Okay. And that's how it could be in darkness. But it also looks like the kind of thing where they're like, uh, we don't want it to be obvious that it's Neo. So we'll put a, a shading filter over the the whole thing, so yeah, that they can't tell that, and I definitely think it could be a death scene as well, maybe. Oh, for or, for uh, you know, just like hinting that someone may die in said fight, or just or bring just back be... Neo to die. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how much the uh, fandom would uh, freak out? I don't know. Oh boy. <laughs> I almost well, want it to happen now that you said it, but like <laughs> like especially like when if, she if can it just happens, shatter, I'm sorry, Neo. Like, yeah. But like it, especially when she can just like shatter, it's like, okay, she she's the one person that yeah. should be able to always escape. Like it's kind of like True. Blake dying. It's like Really? really? Yeah. Yeah. I... Yeah. Blake has to get sniped in order to actually die. And yeah. and we already know how they handle snipers in volume three. <laughs> exactly. So. Yeah, there's um, there's that. So, uh, crap, what was the other thing? Oh, Neo might actually be the other theory I came up with, like, two years ago with Volume 4. Like, uh -huh. I, I don't know if I talked to you, Caleb, about it, on how I thought Neo would be hunting down Team Ranger, because... Oh, yeah, you know, I remember you sharing me with that. Yeah, yeah, and then I said eventually she'll find out, oh, it was a Grim, and then therefore blame Cinder, because she brought the Grim, And then she'd oh. go after Cinder. I'm like, man, you know... I might be half right with another theory. Like you might be. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I think anyone could put two and two together, especially with the news media in this world of Remnant, basically saying the attack on you uh, know Beacon, Beacon was carried out by the White Fang and some Grim and Adam mm -hmm, Taurus, yeah. but they kind of left out a little bit of the 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 Atlas involvement kind of thing. Oh, okay. makes so, sense. So because so yeah, it's all it's all chaos. It's already bad enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But but the thing is, is that Neo shouldn't know that Roman's dead. Yeah, like they... it happened well after she had been, you know, umbrella yeah, out. And that's that's where some <laughs> like backtracking might have to be done, or some sort of way for them to right. show that Neo found out that he was dead. Yeah. She just Neo's found lost somewhere. days. <laughs> <laughs> I just that, want more Avatar references. Hey, that yeah. would be great. And it's a character that can't actually talk. So, you know, there you go. Wow, that would be... Guys, so for those of you who have seen yeah. Avatar Last Airbender, you know Appa's last days? Appa can't talk. Neo can't talk. She was alone for a long time. There it is. Uh. Miles and Carrie, hire me for a writer. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll write a mute episode for Neo. It'll be amazing. Uh, that that would be pretty cool to see, like a kind of like Rivers is Blue season fourteen, like oh, just episodic stories. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know why they... I Okay, no, I know why they don't do that. Mm. But I think it would be really fun to try that out. They take I, one of their writers for, like, Chibi, for instance. Yeah. And I think it's just expensive. That's the main reason. It's yeah. too much work. It requires sure. a lot of moving parts and everything. And a lot yeah. of collaboration. But a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's basically the entire studio just shifts to Ruby for, you know, yeah. X number of weeks, months. But they could basically try a, like, a Christmas episode. Like, that would be that great. Would be I would love I, that so much. I, you know, they're, they're in the middle of snow right now. They, they can do it. They, there's mm-hmm. pine trees everywhere. They just need to circle around, have a little campfire, build a snowman. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, wanted to mention a quick thing, as Jacob has, has to go pretty soon. Okay. Um, we got the Ruby Combat Ready board game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we've now played it, like, three or four times. Yeah. So if anyone wants a hot take on the uh, the board game that uh, I am ready, they kickstartered. Uh, you know, we can take a look at that and tell you about that and stuff. Yeah, totally. And also, oh, hold like, on, you, you guys. Discord freaked out for a second there. Oh. Okay, now it's back. Okay. 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 Yeah. I was gonna say, uh, I totally want to hear you guys' opinion, especially after playing your card game at RTX and knowing you guys are. <laughs> oh, big thanks. Fans like that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, your game was yeah. probably the most entertaining one that was so that we've ever done. <laughs> that was myself and another RTXer, yeah. and then it was you and Kalaxin yep. yeah, versus I, us two. I think it was uh, Cal and I versus Sunny and you. Yes, that's yeah. right. And, or, wait, no. No, I think it was someone else. I yeah, think Sunny was someone. watching. Oh, yeah, Sunny yeah, was yeah. watching. I think it was a guy, yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah. we were playing, and it was the most neck and neck back and forth yeah. thing. <laughs> So at, at the beginning, Red... I was like, "I'm losing this. I'm so oh, gonna yeah. lose." <laughs> well, yeah, you guys were totally losing, but then like, just, just randomly turned just, it around, just little by little, sl- slowly but surely. All oh, your characters yeah. at like four health, two health, one health. Yeah. Gosh, um. Somehow. What What ended up happening was is the they sent us the game, and Jacob and I tried it two player with only two characters, and it's a cooperative game where you basically fight bosses like <laughs> Roman, Adam, or Cinder. Yeah. And then you set up these side encounters that are just constant threats. And the game is not balanced well for two player uh, or so we thought and we uh-huh. kept like having to make sure we understood uh-huh. the rules properly. But the game is actually really fun. It is. There's an oh, RPG good. progression system within the encounters so you're yeah. making oh. your deck stronger by defeating Wait. encounters, assisting mm-hmm. allies, taking on yeah. fights and stuff. Have you and played Munchkins? Yes. Yes. Is it a bit like that, sort of? On, uh, like, the defeating the enemies getting stronger? Somewhat, but Munchkin, you don't have a deck. You're drawing yeah. from decks. Yeah. And you put cards out there with, like, items and stuff. In okay. this one, you basically have your character, which you choose, like, Ruby, for instance. Yeah. And you have your aura level, but you have, like, an XP level. Yeah. Oh. And then you have your small deck that you can choose from to draw cards. But then you have these other decks out there that are like upgraded versions of your deck, and then you can select cards from them by spending XP to integrate yep. them into your current deck. Oh, okay. That you get based on what That's... you do during the game, right. and like, and there's there's four different tiers of cards that so you can like upgrade lots of little things or just go hard on like try and get that one, one crazy big. good card or yeah, yeah. That it's pretty the, awesome. The power fantasy of being a character fighting one of your favorite villains to mm-hmm. basically give a beat down on while your buddies are over there taking emerald and mercury right. and then someone else is trying to stave off grim it just ends up being this manic kind of team let's let's like see if we yeah. can somehow get our way through this and then it's like you know i'm yang let's fight and then we throw <laughs> yang up there and, so, and she just does like 40 damage to adam just wailing it yeah that part was probably my favorite part we had a game that we lost we absolutely lost against adam and yet yang put in a serious punishment against adam because here's the thing adam is just busted like roman roman is fine he's got lots of cool mechanics and stuff Uh uh-huh but Adam is just flat out busted. Like, <laughs> there's so many things happen with his character, and it kind of works because he's the edge lord, right? Yeah. And of course, he'd just have yeah. like passive stat boosts till forever, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, if you don't beat him quickly, you just he just, can't he beat just, him. He just oh, kills man. you. 
Yeah. But but it was fun having us basically trying so hard to beat him. Oh yeah. And it yet, got intense. And yeah, getting intense. I think we got him down to like fourteen HP and he starts off with like eighty. No, ten. We got him down to ten. 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 Yeah. And oh we just gosh. gave up at that point because we were like inching him down like little bits of health at a time. So it felt like a proper boss encounter. But here's the, the, the worst part about this. We started playing the game at like ten at night and we went to bed at what? Three. Three in the morning. Now, that was our second yeah, that this was, was our, just us like, trying to beat Adam, like, basically. And it's insane. So, no, now that's it's, that's not a good representation no. of yeah. the game as a whole, because yeah. what they do is, and this is what's really cool, is you can fight the one boss, right? Right. But you can fight them multiple <laughs> times, and you can basically keep using that deck that you started building, right? So you uh -huh. get stronger. So you get stronger okay. across the course of the games you play. Right. Right? Okay. Um, so... All total, we probably played, like, four games that night. Yeah. Um, but the Adam one just took forever. That was the last one. Because we wanted to <laughs> yeah. win, but we were like, we can't die. We can't and party. We, we did a good job of staying alive, but we yeah. just couldn't kill the sucker. Oh, yeah. man. So, That's awesome. That was fun. Yeah. Like, it kind of makes me think of, like, Monopoly a little bit on just, like, yeah. how the game could either go pretty quickly or just yeah. forever long. Never end. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we beat Roman once in 20 minutes. Yeah, we we were just like, hey, let's just let's just destroy. We got him. places to be. Poor Roman, he had no. Like, huh. We just one, two, three, four, and it, he was done. Oh yeah. man, I, I think actually one of the people didn't even get to fight him. No, no, I think I think we went the the full cycle. Blake wasn't Blake the one that killed Roman on that one. I'm talking about the more recent one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Everyone got got a oh, chance okay. to kill him, but yeah, it was but like just barely. Yeah, we left Roman with like four HP for Weiss, yeah. and Weiss was just like, yeah. <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> right. And I was just, no. It was great. But yeah, they put uh, they put Little Miss Malachite in the game. They yeah. Did. yeah. That was their extra their character. extra character for Volume 6. Yeah, that was the yeah. Kickstarter stretch goal, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, remember yeah. that. I think my one regret is not donating to that when I had the chance. I think... I think it really was just like, uh, I need to save up for RTX. I think that was my mindset <laughs> in not doing it. Makes sense. So, oh man. It, but yeah, I'll much... bring this. I'll bring this to RTX as well. I'm sure they're gonna have copies oh, of yeah. the game available for people to play and stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. But oh, there's yeah. a lot of pieces, so I don't know if that's actually a safe thing for right. Rooster Teeth. There to are do. so many different decks and stuff because of all the different yeah. like add-on bits and things. Yeah, yeah, there's like 400 cards or maybe 300 cards by the time we like had everything all there yeah because just the villain decks is like this much cards and the rule book so is very complicated it's it's kind of a tough read so, uh, so it's but not the, like game the, game, the game is pretty easy the game is pretty up. easy to pick up. yeah but okay. it's more of it's one of those like learn by doing things rather than like trying to figure it out by reading okay cool mm -hmm. cool would it be a game like if i had my own set uh i would be able to play over discord with you guys if like you guys had everything else set up and i just had like my uh... character the main thing, yeah, yeah, I, I think you could. I think you could. Probably. Let me, let me actually think about this, because what you need is you'd need a master board where yeah. everything is referenced to that, and then one person controls the board. Mm -hmm. Because as long as one person has control of the villain, it's yeah. basically okay. I think the main problem is that you're kind of having to the talk. Board. Yeah, you're having to talk a lot about what's on the board. And like yeah. how you're gonna help each other and you know do combinations. Yeah. And yeah. But let's let's yeah. say you were doing this on a video and you had an open, showed all the stats on the video mm -hmm. and each side could see it. Yeah. You could have all the HP, the, all the bonuses, the, all the buffs of the villain and stuff like that there. And then you're just basically telling them what stance the villain's card is in. Right. Which you have one of three options there. Mm -hmm. And then whether or not an event is coming up and mm -hmm. you don't know yeah. what we're talking about here, but those yeah. are just basically the mechanics of how you fight the villain. So, yeah, I think you could do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Theoretically. Yeah, I yeah. I think once yeah. I play and get used to the game, maybe maybe we could try that sometime. <laughs> For but... sure. Mm -hmm. Uh I have to go yeah, uh, in to about go 5 minutes, 10 minutes for uh, uh Twitch and stuff, but Jacob, you have to head Actually, out now. I have to head out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, all right. Yeah, so we I'll, can... I'll I'll hang out and chat with you for for a little bit longer. Okay. And uh uh, cool. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for hanging out. Yeah. With us, yeah. Jacob. Thank you, yeah, Jacob. Glad I could make it. Yeah. Yeah. Glad talking right. to you again. Yes. Yeah. See so, ya. Yeah. Let me give him a a, a a filter thing so he can sneak through the back door with <laughs> you guys yes. behind there. <laughs>
But I'm still I'm still here. Y'all can yeah. Y'all can chat with me. We, we just have a tiny tiny semblance of sanity logo there. And, and I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> it's a secret. We can't let anyone know what's behind there. <laughs> yeah. Um, I hunt. I feel so bad for Hunt SD in the chat. He's like, I barely get to these because of Cal's Patreon discuss and, uh, discussion. And like, right when Jacob's leaving, it's like, oops. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And, Sorry, Hunt. Yeah. And John Ronald, he, he pretty much was me back in volume three. Uh, he, he was saying, I got first membership mainly to avoid Ruby spoilers this volume. Had some bad luck last volume. I, I think. I think it was during volume three for me. I mm -hmm. No, I, I became a, a sponsor because back then it was called sponsor. Yep, it was called sponsor. Yep. Uh, back in 2014, I think, like September of 2014. So this is post Monty era red versus blue. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because Ruby was 2015. Uh, no, 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 no. The trailers were 2014, but, but, but wait a minute. No, 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 no. I, I think no, no, no. volume one was 2014. I okay. Mean, trailers, trailers were late 2013, I want to say. Hold on. Ruby, volume uh, one. Yep. Was July 4th, 2014. Ah. Yeah, so. I I know Ruby was definitely not a reason why I became a Oh, sponsor. wait. Someone's saying it's starting in 2013. Because of the trailers. If you're counting the trailers, like the red trailer... It would be no, like it says, uh, it's 2013 for it says on August 16th, 2013, streaming site Crunchyroll announced Samuel Cat Ruby. Um, oh, wait, hold on. On Google, uh, where is this showing it? it it's saying, uh, season one, episode one, air date July 18th, 2013. There you go. There you go. Yeah. That's that's right. Yeah, wow. Yeah, here, okay, I, I could even uh, put it yeah, up. Yeah, I found it on guess. Wikipedia. Yeah, oh, I just googled uh, Ruby volume one chapter one and it just gave me that there you uh, go also uh speaking of rooster teeth and sponsors and first memberships uh the community site is in beta now i'm not in the beta but oh they actually have a community site up um it, it's been up it's just uh they didn't have the tab for a while and then oh the community portion of the gotcha. Site. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, I see what you're saying. I was like, they're Sorry. doing a whole nother website. I got gotcha you. It, now it's pretty much the old website, but only mm -hmm. the community stuff. So, gotcha. Uh, Is it just roosterteeth.com/community? Uh, let me look at the URL I have. I have. Let me see if I can hack into it. Oh my gosh! I love how the. Oh yeah, the forum's called sponsors. It's uh, roosterteeth.com/community. So, hey, yeah, right. I'm in. <laughs> Boom! I'm but gonna I'm go to my to profile. Certain items. Yeah, if people are yeah, it's it's the old it's the old yeah it's the old website basically. Yeah, it's the old website, but it I think the beta has started and they'll be launching the site anew uh, by the beginning of next year. I think around the time cool. Genlock comes out. I need to talk to nice. Jackie because I want to do like a video help advertise the community site because I want to awesome. see some life back in that section. Anyway, hey, where where's <laughs> yeah. your current community uh, discussion happening for Ruby right now? For me, it's actually in the Discord for nice. Portal sixty four, and I'll venture off into Cal's a bit as well because she kind of gifted me access to her Discord. Her Discord's usually Patreon only. Yeah, that's ours too. Yeah. Wait but... a minute, yours is. I literally am like having a weird. Why am I not in your Discord? <laughs> Wait, Send me an invite. I, Hold I, on. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I'm like, I swear. I hop around you... the Discords a lot. I I, I have about yeah. 20 of them that I'm in, but I am getting more and more addicted to Discord, yeah. just kind of, you know, going into those kinds of yeah, things let, and stuff. I'll I'll do that after the show, because I don't want to yeah, accidentally show, mess up sure. the OBS capture me no, like. That's, that's fine. Let's, let's do go. that then. But yeah, no, I totally would love to have you on there. I think maybe Jacob was a part of it for a little bit, but like just I think hasn't been active in it. Yeah, that's probably what it is because um, he's got his book he's writing and stuff, so he doesn't have time usually to go around too much. But I know he spends a lot of time on the 
uh, Gigak Discord because he's his favorite um, anime YouTuber, and he's got a very exclusive Patreon set up there oh. for the for the Discord and such. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Also, uh, I saw you guys had your own website. Oh man, it's not my di- it's my Google <laughs> Chrome anymore. The website is the not updated tag. frequently. The, the it battle needs to tag be. site, yeah. Yeah, so, it needs to be it needs to be fixed. Do, but, do you want yeah. to take this chance to explain what battle tag is for the viewers? Oh, battle lines? Yeah, battle lines. Sorry. About yeah, yeah. Battles. Jacob, I'll shout out Jacob's book for sure. Jacob is writing a sci-fi uh, action book novel. One book. No, it's not. A, it's not going to be a series or anything. Okay. And he wants to make his splash in this genre with the idea of a group of young super soldiers that have to find basically their way to have a weird family amidst the craziness of a you know a sci-fi you know adventure action action story you know kind of thing i i don't really know actually as much about it because i'm actually trying to keep myself spoiler free spoiler free Mm -hmm. because he is a very fun writing style where i know that the reason why he doesn't want to write the series is because he's going to end this book with a banger ending. Like, Ooh. like he wants, he wants an ending probably that's going to, you know, make people just kind of go, wow. Whoa. Just so, so yeah, I, I'll definitely hype it up once the, the pre-order thing is announced. He is actually, um, he's prepping a video specifically just to hype the pre-order thing. And I'm not yeah. allowed to say anything about what it is. Okay. But, um, Hey, subscribe to Semblance of Sanity yeah. on YouTube, and oh, uh, yeah. you too. I ring the bell, of course, but you too yeah. can find out about. Uh, yeah, I was like that hit, whole thing. Hit me up when those pre-orders hit, because I'll totally buy one. So. Okay, sweet. Yeah, we we totally will do. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, let's see what the chat is saying. Uh, and Ruby episode three got demonetized. People still wonder why Ruby got taken off of YouTube. Wait, uh, is Kruby uploading like uh, video do- like videos on the Rooster Teeth site right now for Ruby? Uh, what I think it is, is they have their behind the episode, you know, behind the scenes videos. Yeah. Oh wait. Oh, and it's a Dominic way for them to advert- subscribe. Thank you. Yeah, it's a way for them to. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh no, no, it's all right. Uh, it's just a way to kind of advertise the show on the, the show. site. Yeah. Let's see. I just want to double check their channel and see if that's right. They they got Ruby Rewind and uh oh yeah, and Kruby is up there. Wait, they're saying episode 3 got demonetized, but I don't see it up in their videos yet. I have episode 2 that came out a day ago. They said or maybe they uploaded it just haven't made it public. But ah oh, man Oh, um, John Ronald is saying, get one of Kruby to narrate the audiobook version of... Oh, uh, Jacob, uh, Jacob has a dream of getting Crispin Freeman, actually, to narrate it. Oh. So, be cool. do you know who Crispin Freeman is? I, it's I a recognize... voice, voice actor. Yeah, I know it's a voice actor. Hold on. He Hold has on. a very... He has a very good, deep voice, if he wants to be. Have you seen any of the Fate stuff? Yes, which character is he in Fate? Kire Kotomine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. He has that kind of a voice, you know. That and yeah. I, I'm even like trying to channel it right now, but uh, yeah, uh, we'll 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 see if that ends up happening. He reminds he's me gonna of... launch the he's gonna launch the regular book first, but uh-huh. if there's an audio book, I mean, he wants to go big and get someone. Fi- yes, also Alucard from uh, Helsing. Oh, like okay. the dub of Alucard. That I was thinking yeah. Alucard from Castlevania. But... Uh, is it is it Alucard from Castlevania, John Ronald? I think it's I think it's from Helsing. Yeah. Yeah, Brandon's clarifying. Yeah, it's it's from Helsing Ultimate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what yep. Fun... Jeremiah Gutwald, Orange Boy from Code Geass. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So and, one... and Winston from Overwatch. Yep. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know his voice then. Totally. Uh... Okay, One Punch Dan is asking, you think you guys might do another Vital Cast panel at RTX next year if you can? It is Well, in... David. What? <laughs> well, David, like, <laughs> uh, uh, you have the scoop for us? <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah. Do you I, know anything we don't? <laughs> uh, I, I know what I'm planning. Like, okay, uh, if it happens, here's, like, the way... You know how I introduced you guys for the panel? Totally. 
Uh, I've already thought of, like, the rough draft for what I'm going to do for that section next year. Okay. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out the main part. I don't know if I want to do the Never Have I Ever Again. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, you know, I just want to keep it fresh, Keep uh, try to figure out something that's entertaining and maybe totally. uh, audience interaction active a little bit. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to do that, but I, I don't they know. they ask you back? Well, I mean, technically, they already had. Uh, do, you, do you remember? Uh, I, I like... kind of remember. I just don't remember getting the details. Okay, so... I just remember they were saying, like, wow, you guys got a lot of people here. Like, Oh, uh, so... Okay, so let, let me tell you, because there was a few stuff that happened post-RTX, not directly okay. between me and Rooster Teeth, but stuff that people in the chat have pointed out to me, and then I did some research and figured out some more stuff. But uh, Jackie, the community manager mm -hmm. at rooster teeth you right. know right when we're like all right thank you for coming to our panel bolts from the back of the room to me and she's just ecstatic like this panel was amazing can he come back next year and i was like you know like, like oh, oh. <laughs> yeah like senpai has noticed me <laughs> yeah she's like hi i'm jackie i'm the community manager at rooster teeth hello can you come back next year i'm like yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, dude that's so awesome yeah so so there was that and so she used to be the community manager at las vegas for rooster teeth gotcha. so, and uh the person who took over that spot for her was talking to me after the jeff williams concert and he's oh. like oh i know her very well and he's like if she said this you believe it 110% that she means it and she will like throw everything she's got to like support it and make it happen. And I'm like, Oh my God. There gosh. you go, dude. Oh, no. So I'm like, I'm like dying, like, uh, you know? Uh, and then, uh, some people were saying that some of the rooster teeth panels on mixer didn't even get archived, but our panel did. And like our panels what? got more views on mixer than some of the rooster teeth official panels what yeah so like I, I don't know if you Bro. remember the twitter i i don't i, Bro, I remember it. i remember us uh, like celebrating it in the twitter group chat that we had for the panel it's like yo guys we got more views than some of the rooster teeth panels boom you know so i must have missed that i'm so sorry yeah. i was like yeah oh hey it's sunny in the chat hello sunny yeah oh hey. um, verif is saying is this the same jackie from ruby rewind yes it's the same yes. jackie which I actually need to message her about uh, the community uh, website because she, you know, being the community manager is involved with some of that. And I kind of want to be like, hey, when is it launching? Uh, would you be willing to collaborate with me to make a video for my channel to help advertise oh. the launch of that? That's nice. That's what I've been procrastinating on all week. It, whenever I think mm. about it, it's like 1030 at night. And I'm like, I'm dying. <laughs> like... <laughs> so yeah i'll do it later yeah i'm like finishing the edit on the reaction video and uploading it oh yeah i should message jackie i'm too tired to write something coherent yeah, yeah so uh all so, right i gotta run yeah i gotta run right. over to twitch which guys follow them uh semblance of sanity yt yeah semblance of sanity underscore yt we just got yeah. twitch partnered like two or three days ago partnered not just a yeah partner like like partnered like it happened mid podcast twitch staff raided us and i was like ah what's happening dude because i thought like we were getting spammed dude. by bots or something i'm like mods yeah. delete these people and they're like no you got partnered and they're like what that is so, amazing congrats so yeah we're we're doing a, a gaming stream tonight so pretty casual just hang okay. out q a cool. uh, but we have we have podcasts on mondays and manga streams on tuesdays yeah i've been seeing that uh what what game are you playing for your stream uh, I either do uh, Slay the Spire or Hearthstone. I I'm just basically okay. looking to relax and hang out with people. Yeah, cool, cool. I'll try to be in the chat in that while I'm writing a rough draft for Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> no, no pressure, dude. Like, oh, uh, no. Yeah, well, congratulations, dude, on just killing it with this podcast, dude. There's, uh, there's not many people I'm that trying. are staying as consistent as you with, like, putting out the kind of the community interactive content. So, yeah, and more power to you. I, dude, I have to say, Ruby in its off season is like the hardest part, and I'll bet. Uh, like, part of me feels like a little bit had backfired post con, 
uh, just like people watching and then like, there's not a whole lot of Ruby stuff to talk about right now. And then so views went up and then dipped a bit and now they're starting <laughs> to climb back up. So I'm like, okay guys, okay. So in my reaction videos, if you hear me saying Vital Cast a lot, I'm trying to do subliminal messaging for you to watch <laughs> Vital Cast live. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, next level IQ. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. All right, guys, it's been awesome chatting with you. It's been awesome chatting with you too, David. Yeah. I'll catch you all uh, in another in another thing. All right. <laughs> See you, Caleb. See ya. Bye, guys. <laughs>